Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. We're talking about favorites today. So I have compiled a makeup bag full of the things I feel like I've really been loving in the past month. And yeah, it's some really good stuff. I'm going to be applying the things I have in here. There might be some areas where I fill in the blank with another kind of product, but yeah, let's get started. I'm in my sweatshirt because, you know, spring swooped in and said, we'll give you some severe storms and then we'll leave you high and dry without any of that pleasant shorts wearing playground going weather, you know? Feels like we're back in some kind of phase of winter now, but it's Rimmel Stay Matte, okay? Rimmel Stay Matte, the primer combined with Rimmel Lasting Finish. This foundation in itself, very good, but I have noticed that when I combine this, I feel like we are some kind of indestructible force. This is the foundation I want to be putting on all the time. This is super affordable. Find it at Walgreens. Soft Beige is the shade. It's got SPF 20, and it really does wear incredibly well. If you have not watched my Rimmel video, it is all about Rimmel. So many things you need to know, so please go back and watch that. But it's definitely left me with a great little combo here. So my skin is already nicely moisturized. I've got my sunscreen on. I take this Stay Matte Primer. Don't be scared of the word matte. It says shine controlling, pore minimizing, hydrating feel, and smooth skin. It's really good. So it comes out looking white. It goes across the skin really, really nicely. And it just, I feel like it hangs on to the foundation. And I love the feel of thinking like, okay, time to touch up. You know, I'm about to pick the kids up from school. Time to take a look at my makeup and the whole face look seems completely in place, you know? Now I am a normal to dry skin type and this combo really does it for me. I'm not sure like what this would do on a super duper oily person. Maybe it would still do well, but I love that Stay Matte Primer and then I take a pump of my Lasting Finish in Soft Beige. I've been blending this out with a brush. It's a pretty traditional liquid consistency. You could use a sponge, but a brush has been working just fine for me. It's not too thick. The coverage is just absolutely beautiful with it. I'm so, so glad I went back and discovered it. I say went back because Lasting Finish has been around for a long time, really. Got something down there. Um, I'm gonna use my little Profusion buffing brush and just go around the face. Like I said, it's a real easy blend. Skin looks super even when I'm done and I feel like the shade is just good for me. Big fan. You know you're loving a foundation when you get a new order from Sephora and there are complexion products in there and you're sitting there thinking, gosh, I still kind of wish I could pick up Rimmel Lasting Finish today. That's saying something. Now I also did a video, like kind of a partner video to the Rimmel one on their Stay Matte range as a whole, like using the Stay Matte foundation, which is a legitimate full coverage foundation. May feel a little thick on the face for some, but actually for about the $5 mark that it's priced at, I think it's a pretty darn impressive foundation. But this seems to wear even better on me than that. Getting it all blended out and the skin is looking great. And yeah, I do notice a difference around my nose with the pores when I use this stuff first. So yay, I think that primer actually is doing a phenomenal job. There aren't a ton of primers that I really like give praise to, but that one's very good. For favorite concealer, I think I've talked about this in a recent month loving this, but the Pro Fix Stick in the shade Pink for correcting concealing. Um, if you saw the video all about concealers, you saw me talk about this, but like I said, I've mentioned it before. I think it's so, so handy and easy. You know, literally draw it right over your spot. It's got that light pinky brightening tone. Take the end of your brush. Like this is an e.l.f. duo brush that I'm using right here. I could have used this brush for foundation and I often do, but just color in <laughs> over the spot and immediately great brightness. Like it does such an effective job without being too thick. I mean, yeah, it's a stick, but throw away your old ideas of what stick concealers are like, because this is smooth. So I just kind of go over my dark circle and then I do a little brightening on the outside too. And then you can go over that with really whatever concealer you want. I named a bunch of great concealers in my concealer video that I recently did. I'm gonna come in with the multitasker from Rimmel today. I'll admit I didn't like throw this in my favorites bag, but it does pair in just really nicely with this little Rimmel complexion routine. It, it just works well. I wear the shade um, Sand, and yeah, it never looks too thick on my under eye. I just give a dot like right there if I've already done some correcting. Um, use it around any nose redness. I do have a little bit of that. Maybe I'll put a little bit out here too, just for brightening sake. But yeah, this concealer is not too thick, 
has really nice coverage, and I just find it especially being a good partner on top of the Lasting Finish Foundation. I don't know what it is about that foundation, but it seems to level up like everything else on the face as well. It's like that perfect teammate that you want on the team that takes all of the other teammates up a notch just by being there. That's Rebel Lasting Finish. I just use my usual technique there where I spread out my little dots and then dab over with the larger side. And look at the coverage on the skin right now. Look at that really nice brightness right up in here. I wouldn't have had to have gone in with that NYX stick, but it really deserved a mention if we're talking favorites because I think that is such an effective product. For setting things, I did not pull out like a certain loose powder on purpose. I would say most days I've gone between um, my Maybelline Fit Me in Fair or my Wet n Wild Photo Focus in Translucent. Those have been the most used ones here lately. Also, you could just use Rimmel Stay Matte. This I did pull into the favorites bag because I sometimes prefer this a little bit all over the skin. I also think that if you want to do a light touch up, this is awesome because this powder is so firmly pressed, it paces you and you can't get too much on at once and it just never looks cakey. So I wear that in the shade Creamy Natural. And yeah, it could it set the under eye? Sure, it does, but I sometimes feel like I just get the job done a little faster by going in with a decent amount of like this uh, Wet n Wild Photo Focus. Just tap it in hit T-zone, and then once I dust this away, the powder step is done. See, I'm just taking Morphe under eye bullet brush. You've seen me do this many times, but I kind of blend in slash dust away any extra that was on there. But my friends, if you like some coverage, if you like some staying power, this is a great combo of things. And it's all been drugstore so far. Isn't that great? I love that. As far as my little bag of my favorites, I did not really specifically pull in a bronzer. I feel like, or a cream contour. I've been bouncing around so much lately. I feel like with these steps, using a lot of different ones that I love. So I thought today I'll just use one of the ones I'm liking a lot, which is this Physician's Formula Mineral Wear Diamond Bronzer. This is the deep bronze gem shade. I think the regular lighter shade is really good too. Um, I just feel like this makes a little more impact for me. And yeah, I'm just dabbing straight in with my Sephora 56 brush, getting a little color on the skin. It looks like it's been textured on the top somewhat. Uh, I think I referred to that as the popcorn ceiling on the product that they've left, but um, it is a cream. Sometimes when they change the surface of the product, it makes you wonder, but this is a cream and it's really easy to work with and I like the tone. So here I am just going in there right on the hollow of the cheek, trying to get a contour but not drop it too low. And then we're just buffing an easy buff in. I do a little buff and then it kind of amounts to a pressing padding motion. I haven't even had a sip of my coffee yet today. It's just been sitting over here on my warmer. I'm impressed to be this fired up on a Thursday morning. We had practice last night and it was a good practice. And by the way, I read through so many of your comments on Saturday's video. It was the kind of monochromatic coral spring get ready with me. And you guys talking about coaching your own kids and different stuff like that. And I just, I really appreciated the advice and just all the things we seem to share and comment on that topic. I've, that was really nice. But all that being said, we had a really good practice last night, so I was I was glad. I felt like it was an especially good practice for Biddy's team, but then on Belle's team, we just had a couple of absences, and even on a 17-girl team, a couple people being gone makes such a difference for what they can do, because there's lots of stunts. Basically, everyone's involved when it comes to the pyramids and stuff like that, and so like, I'm coming in and basing a couple things, but can't do everything, and it's just really hard when there's absences. But there we go with that light little contour there. I think that looks so good, smooth. It was easy. I do like that product a lot, but I've also been enjoying the new one from Too Faced, that stick, and it's starting to smell more chocolatey the more I use it, which is a bonus. Couple of blush favorites. I've really been into my Laura Geller baked blushes. These are the blush and bronze, which you may or may not know about these, but they're called baked blush and bronze, and they definitely incorporate some swirls of blushy tones, but also kind of a neutral bronzy look and I think they're super pretty on the skin so this is probably my most favorite it's the one called apricot bronze and I think you can see the really pretty apricot tones but also we have bronze we have champagne this is definitely a blush that comes off kind of glowy as well and then more recently I got the earthy bronze and this one has a totally different like 
swirl pattern. It's like you're looking at a map or something from a distance. Is that Europe over there? I don't know. But you've got this deep burgundy color, bronze, a lot of light soft pink that comes off kind of in a highlighter vibe really like that's your glow but if you just tap your brush gently over all of this you get a very pretty look on the skin and I'll link to the video where I use that. Laura Geller baked blushes absolutely cannot go wrong. Just the regular line as well. Pink buttercream is great. Starfish Island. Starfish Island I love because I swear they put in swirls of baked French vanilla in that one and then you got the coral and then there's like mauve. She just knows how to layer in those different shades. Sometimes it's an unlikely combo of shades in these, but they work so well for brightening and just giving life to the face. And then more recently, a rediscovered love. This one from One Size. One Size has some really nice little blush palettes. And I know I like the Patrick Ta as well, you know, for combining the cream and the powder, but these are so good too. So it's a cream, it's a powder, and then it's like a blush topper. And it's such a pretty combo. This is the one called Very That. And I've just recently gotten back into this. The compact is wonderful, super solid, super cute, big mirror. Great job with the flip up window over the cream so we're not compromising that cream all the time. But I'm gonna put this on and you're gonna see like, yeah, that's a, that's a really good one. So dabbing into that top shade, dabbing over my cheek. So Bub and I were talking last night and for whatever reason we had a conversation about something really smart that I did. I don't know, what was it, a month or so ago when we had a cheerleading competition in Memphis and we were staying in a hotel. The room was such that we had like a king size bed that me, him, and Ugga slept in and then the girls were in their own like kind of pull out bed in a separate connected room. And when it was time for them to go to bed, they're like, it's too dark in here. It was completely pitch black. They had no window in their room and they're used to having like a little light coming in. So they're like, it's too dark in here. So you know what I did guys? I opened up the microwave. Soft light from the microwave. Perfect amount of light in that extra room. Remember that for your summer vacays. This was a holiday inn and it was just, you know, one of those extra rooms where they had the pull-out couch, they had a little fridge, they had a little microwave. Open up the microwave, there's a little light in it. One of my smartest moves to date. Everybody was happy. Once I did that, I was like, boom, mic drop. Like, that that's my shining moment. So I just put on the cream. Looks really pretty. It's, it's just a straight up colorful cream. It's a soft coral, okay? I'm into the corals. Then this powder one has the little imprint there with the faces. Speaking of bub, he's off to play basketball with his friend Andy at 6 a.m. Good for you, bub. Get after it. Look how pretty this combo is. It's a really well done shade of coral. Soft peachy. Okay, looking good. The layering is so, so working. And by the way, you could flip that order. I know Patrick Ta says, like, do powder first, actually. Pop the cream on top. You get that nice natural finish. That can look really pretty, too. But with this, I just like to go down the line. And then I've got this kind of golden peach topper. I just pick that up again with the blush brush, and I go directly over the whole cheek area. And I just get this soft glow. I haven't been laying down a lot of highlight lately and maybe that's why I like this because I just haven't even been necessarily seeking out that blinding highlight. I kind of like the blushy step and I go straight over the nose. That little glowy topper gives a beautiful look. Another thing we were talking about last night, there was this TikTok of Kate Hudson and she's just standing there. I don't know, remember if she's putting makeup on or doing a face mask, but she's just standing there talking about how like, I like stuff. I like makeup. I like dishes. I like this and that. Like all these different things that she likes. I'm like, yeah, I've never really heard anybody talk like this, but yes, exactly me. I like stuff. <laughs> I'll have to link to her video because it's kind of funny because it seems like she literally loves just everything and I feel so much the same way. So I feel like this look is looking so good. I'm going to take a little bit of mist. I love my CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skincare Priming Glow Mist. It has a beautiful sprayer, a fantastic fan of mist, and you just put that over the top, and suddenly things are looking, you know, a bit more one with the skin. Guys, we need to have a talk about brows and aging, and my mom's gonna be over here, if she's watching this, she's gonna say amen to that. Because as you get older, your face kind of, like, things come down a little bit. And when you're at rest, like totally at rest, like I'm sitting here talking to you and I'm blah, 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 blah. But if I'm totally at rest, like the brows really sink down and your RBF can look a little bit intense. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're just not like on at all and you're just sitting there reading something, like your face is just down and your brow 
to combat that, if you have enough brow, if you're like me, you got a thick brow wanting to be there. Like hairs wanting to grow all up in here for me. So I got to pay attention to the way I sculpt my brows and I got to specifically pay attention to this zone right here because too much hair, too much thickness that can kind of take you by surprise. You know, you'll be like, oh, my brows look fine. Well, maybe they got a little thick down in here because when your face is just sitting there at rest, it can look like too much. So I went in and I gave myself a little brow makeover the other day and I tweezed up under here. I got like little hairs that I thought were somewhat insignificant, but in reality, I think maybe they were causing some shadows. Here I'm in beautiful full lighting. I'm more so talking about these situations where you're just in, you know, some random room and you're not well lit by a ring light and it can look shadowed under there. So I tweezed right up under here. I also gave my brows a trim. To give your brows a trim, take a spoolie brush have them stand straight up here and my brows don't really need a trim right now so it may not make a lot of sense but see how the brow hair is standing up beyond the spoolie and then you can come there and cut if you want to. I pay attention to that kind of with the front part. I let this stuff lay down but if you've got really really long brow hairs you may want to consider giving them a trim so when you gel them they can kind of be standing up and giving your face a bit more lift because if you've got super long brow hairs and you want to stand them up you could look like some kind of I don't know animal so think about that and think about like is your face falling a little bit do you need to lighten up in here and then after I finish my brow, I will take this Pro Fix Stick, the concealer, and go in to this zone and brighten up. I never really made this part of my routine, but I'm on purpose brightening right under the intersection of the brow. So that will come in a second. I also have been using this e.l.f. Brow Lift to even more effectively like perk up the brow. But fill in with whatever you want. This is my Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit. It's shade four. I've just been using it a lot because it's a very appropriate shade. It's a good texture. It's just an easy fill in for me. So I'm doing my fill in and I am really keeping it high, like at the brow and above. So again, we're not having a droop. We're not having that sinking too intense kind of look when the face is at rest. There's just a brow quickly filled in. We'll do it over here. This brow is always just a little bit harder for me. It's just not the exact same shape as my other brow, but it, she's all right. I'm fluffing in just a little bit here, but not too much. I did also tweeze out this way. Like I, I took out some hairs that were right in here. And it wasn't like I was taking out a big thick forest of hairs, but just some kind of like generally unnoticed stray hairs that I think contribute to a shadowed look as a whole. All right, brows are filled in. Um, there's a little special brush that I had gotten with my e.l.f. brow lift. I've had this for a while, just never used it that much. They have this little thing that like lays down, little spatula. I feel kind of funny about that, but whatever. I take this end, this spoolie, lay it down in the brow lift. Brow lift is kind of thick, kind of goopy. You don't want to get too much on. Sometimes I dab it back off on my hand, but then it does really freeze the brows in place and I'm going for more of a pulled up, pulled straight up look in the inside, straight up right here and then slowly they start to lay over to the side. That's a pretty good lifted up brow, all right? And the logic with bringing in this brightening stick in a second is the thought that even if your brow is really nicely groomed, sometimes you can still have just a, a shadow right here just by having an eyebrow there at all you know especially one that's you know semi thick with hair like mine it can still cast a shadow in other kinds of lighting that's where the brightening stick comes in kind of works against that all right I, I don't know what it is something about me doesn't like to go over the brow with that step it just makes me kind of cringe I, I don't know why get over it em we're in a new brow era pro fix stick in the pink shade i'm going under the brow right here Okay, like just, it doesn't have to be neat. We'll blend it out, but think of getting right under that spot, right there. See where we've applied some? And then take a small, like either eye brush you're not using anymore for eyeshadow, or this is a Sigma P84. It's just a little like small angled concealer brush. And just blend that out or blend it out with your finger. And what you'll find is extra brightness all up in this zone. Very effective. Nobody knows exactly what was done. We just know the face isn't 
looking maybe as sinky as it was before. Check your brows out, give them a little brow lift makeover, okay? Then we're moving on to eyes, and this is my Milani eyeshadow primer as always. This is the way I like to start out my eye looks. I gotta say, if you start scrolling through the eyeshadow palette options at Sephora, it's very evident what the eye trend is now these days, and it is a natural look. It's just kind of like barely their palette, matte palette after matte palette, neutral kinds of looks, and I love a good neutral eye. And I don't know that I had an exact super mega favorite this month. Like, I have enjoyed my Magnify's Nude Edition, but I use this very recently. These I used and was not that impressed by the Born This Way mini palettes because I just thought, give me the larger palette. So I've kind of come back into my Sunset Strip, which I really like. I also like their natural nudes as well. I say go for the bigger one. They're charging 30 bucks for those little ones. Like I said, this wasn't necessarily pulled in as, oh, this is my favorite of the month. This is kind of just a enjoying it recently. I think this is what I'll use in this video type of palette. I really do like the tones in here very much. So I'm going to go into Sun Chaser, this matte. I did a really pretty look yesterday. I got some compliments on it at Cheer. I used Hey Honey, the kind of goldeny color. I had that all over the lid and some pretty mattes elsewhere. I thought it looked nice. Again, Sun Chaser, just developing a crease. And then I like how the other mattes, the other light ones, make it really easy to blend that out further. So this is going to be a Saturday video. And shortly after this video goes up, Ugga, a.k.a. Bubba, a.k.a. Rhett, will be playing in his pre-K soccer game. Yep, he's doing soccer. The sign-up came around to my email a couple months ago, and I thought, you know, all he really wants to do is just go running around in the grass, so let's just let him do it. He may kick the ball, he may just look at the grass, he may just think about mowing. All right, this has just been a continual blend of the shade called Sun Chaser, right there. And then I could take High Tide, which is a little bit peachy, but this looks really good when you're blending out the edge of something. Just softening, easy. Okay, I just added a little more Sun Chaser there to the crease. Then I would take a flat brush and a darker shade. Let's go a little more rosy with it. Let's use this Chai Times color right here. I love when there's a burgundy. I'm gonna pat it on my outer lid. This is really pretty just in the crease as well, blending up out of the crease, love it. Look at that, isn't that a pretty, really pretty tone? And then I'm going to take my small pointed brush with that very same shade and just use that to kind of blend in the crease too and lift up. Oh yeah, I love this brush so much. Profusion, I hope you never take this brush away. It is so perfect for doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Blending color up out of the crease. Again, it's Chai Times. It's the same shade that's been patted on the outer lid. We're just taking a little bit more of that and we're getting it very on purpose in the crease and letting it blend up above. We're getting that lift. This is important too in the conversation of is your face falling a little bit? Are things sinking down? Make sure your eyeshadow is still reaching for the stars coming up above that crease. Sometimes people who didn't always start with hooded eyes develop hooded eyes just from the weight of the face and gravity bringing it down. So lift your eyeshadow up beyond the crease so it can be lifting you up. Okay, that's good. I'm going to take this shade called So So Hot right here. So yesterday I was using more of the, the bronzy golden colors. Now I'm going to use this. This looks a little bit rose gold. And I'm going to dab this right there on the lid. Can you use a brush with this stuff? Yes but a finger just shortcuts you to the place you want to be. You want to see opaque color, dab it on with your finger. Okay, I'm basically hitting all of my remaining space with that. Yes, that'll do. Look at that pretty glow on the lids. Sometimes I like all matte, sometimes I want that little pop. And then I want to take my white wispy brush. This is the Sigma E36. I want to go into this shade called Golden Hour, which looks very like pinky peach right there. This looks like kind of yellowed peach. This is your pinky peach. Get a little bit of that and just let that really softly blend over the edge of everything. You could also just use your original crease brush to do this step, but I can be a little more precise with this. Let that get all on the border. I'm loving, loving, loving. And then an awesome finishing touch for darn near any look you do with this palette is your cold brew stick from Hard Candy. Love this on the lower lash line, okay? It's bronzy and pretty and 
just the right depth and you can just drag that along your lower lash line. It's a thick enough stick to basically look smudged right upon application. Like you don't, you don't have to go over it with anything. It just looks soft and it won't move. Doesn't even need to be set. Sets itself. Afternoon with no real activities to go do today. I told the girls we're coming home. We're popping popcorn, we're going up, we're gonna have a Barbie party. Say, what about Bubba? How does he occupy himself during that? He has taken a step stool up into their room. It's like a, a two-part step stool and he feels like it looks like a lawnmower. I gotta give it up for his creative mind. He can turn anything into a mower, a trimmer, or a blower. So he sits on that and he puts on this pair of gloves, random little pair of, of knit gloves that he found downstairs. He puts those on, those are his work gloves. He puts on a pair of galoshes, those are his work boots and he's taken a couple of sticks those little green sticks from our fort making kit and he uses those for his zero turn and he's happy to sit there and do that for a long time or he lines up his cars you know does whatever he's not too interested in the barbies but sometimes he'll play with us too and then this is laura geller this is the dark brown coal shade of her kajal longwear eyeliner so this is darker than the thing i just put on my lower lash line and this I call lazy liner, and this is the way I like to do my liner most. Number one, it lasts. Number two, it's easy. It looks almost more advanced than other kinds of liner because it seems pre-smudged, you know, like the thickness of the stick. It just makes it seem softened up. Pretty soft lash line. And then I pulled in a definite fave for mascara. It's my Rimmel Kind and Free. Love this so much. What a good mascara. I like the way it applies. I like the design of the brush. By the way, this is a nice little free gift mirror I got from a Laura Geller order. It's got one side that's magnified. So I'm seeing everything. Hi, kitten, you little sweetie. I'll be with you in a moment. There's little gaps in the brush, like three avenues of bareness, and it's so good. And the brushy part combs it through couple coats of this. I'm super happy with the lashes. Um, I don't think I've ever had a Rimmel mascara agree with me like this one. One coat is good, but second coat really builds, and I just really like the, the way the brush works. Okay, so we're just going back in here with coat number two, getting more thickness, getting more length. It's really black. Oh, there's the heat kicking on. Can't believe how warm and comfortable it was just a few days ago outside. There is some really cute spring kid stuff at Walmart, by the way, clothes-wise. Found lots of cute little shirts, skirt combos. Also, Belle found the cutest little um, shorts and top set from TJ Maxx. I think it was in the girls' section. It's from Jessica Simpson. And it is just the cutest. It's like a little hooded sweatshirt, but with a ruffle short sleeve. And it has this little smiley face patch on it. And the shorts also have a smiley face patch. Like, I wish I had it in my size. Okay, I got a little messy with it in a couple spots. So just let it dry and then try to brush it away with a spoolie. It'll work. Friends, my memory card cut out on me there, but I continued on with like one more coat. And the third coat built so well. Like it, you can just build and build for days if you want to. Really like the length. It doesn't cause any sensitivity. Um, lower lash line I popped on just now. A little bit of Cali Ray come hell or high water. Last thing I would do face-wise is maybe take just a little bit of the stay mat and hit this area between kind of the way I use cloud set. Yeah. Right in here. Works very similarly. Just hit that little seam between the blush and the under eye. And just kind of smooths it out. And then talking lip products, some definite faves. Most used over the past month. Um, love these Physicians Formula Butter Tinted Lip Conditioners. They are a full color moisturizing gloss. And I've talked about them in a couple of recent videos. I know they've all been tried on, so I will link below to them going on, but I like any of these shades. This Beach Bronze is kind of unique and nice. The other ones are called Brazilian Berry and then Pink Paradise so good. If you need moisture on your lips, but you don't just want to feel like I'm putting on a gloss that, yeah, it feels glossy, but it's not going in and helping my lips. These feel like they're really helping your lips, so I love those. And then I've also been getting into these two shades that I picked up of the Stay Glossy from Rimmel. These I will try on because I don't think you've seen them much. I have bare minimum. It's a very pretty nude. How opaque is it? I don't know, like 75%. Uh, 
opacity on this. It's really pretty for me on top of a nude colored lip liner. Really nice. Like it gives just a little bit of milkiness, a little bit of lightness to a deeper nude lip liner. And it's just creamy. It doesn't seem to have any shimmer. This one does have a little shimmer. It's the one called Date Night. And I think I remember talking about this like it's your lips but better. It really is. Just look at this going on. It looks kind of mauve in the tube. It does have a little shimmer. Look at that. Isn't that pleasant? Isn't that easy? Just want a little gloss. Um, are these as moisturizing? No, not as deeply moisturizing as the Physician's Formula and probably not as long wearing, but they're just nice general glosses that I've been liking in combination with other lip liners. And I've just had a thing for Rimmel lately, okay? And also we need to talk about wind. Wind and lip gloss there's going to be your problem. Um, when I go to pick up the kids, I'm in a situation where I'm getting out of the car and I'm walking to an area to get them. They're coming out of like two different exits, often not at the exact same time. So I've always just thought, you know, I won't be holding up the line of cars that want to do pick up that way by waiting for two different kids to come out from two different places. So I just park and I walk up and get them. Lots of people do this. And Ugga really likes to go with me, run around the schoolyard, pick dandelions, whatever. Anyway, we're in a state of constant wind here. Four Four days out of five, if not five days out of five, are going to be completely windy for whatever reason. And as much as I'd like to throw on, say, this gloss and go, I know my hair will be blowing into it and sticking to it. So I need to leave the house with something that is not sticky. During these windy times, I don't know. I've been using this a lot. Lots of use out of this Wet n Wild Soft Blur Matte Lipstick. It's so pretty. This is the shade, and you have to say it this way, I'm shy. It's super pretty. It's like you were born with perfect rosy lips. Yes, it's matte, but it's not super dry but look at those lips. That's convincing. That looks like, yeah, born this way. I love the scent. So lightly sweet. I feel like this is a really high-end feeling thing for Wet n Wild, and I would like to try other shades, but I'm not sure I would love anything quite as much as this. How gentle, but like, yeah, there's something going on there for sure. I love that so much, and yeah, other things, I got plenty of other matte lipsticks or lip liners I could put on, but you just gotta be cautious. I'm loving the gloss lately. I'm real tempted to wanna grab for a gloss, but I simply can't in this wind if I have to be outside. I'll wear it in the morning, but not for that pickup, or maybe you throw on the gloss when you've got that hair for sure pulled back or a hat on. But here we are today, my friends. Lots of favorites. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed a little brow discussion. Let me know if you give yourself a brow makeover. I feel like this video was really long, like I talked a super long time, so I apologize. For those of you who are still here, I love you, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye!